If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey everybody, uh, Miles and Scott are doing a one piece tournament. So I'm gonna take the time to kind of go over my Tachikaze deck profile for premium. So starter, Raptor Dragon, cause you know, it deal artwork here for fee premium. Like all the other ones, draw a card, get a quick shield. Going right into the meat of it. This is a Tyranna Legend deck. So we got just the three. Um, the whole point is to kind of call it either via Gaia or, you know, kind of calling itself or calling it with uh, uh, Baby Rex just so you can put a front on top and then it gets 10k. So the idea is just kind of to stack the fronts with that. It does have a neat little rearguard skill where at the end of battle it attacks, um, you can kind of plus one, retire something, draw a card. So you can still get some advantage out of that. And the third skill does let you put a gauge on it. Um, there's pretty much no need for any equip gauges in this deck just because the goal isn't to profit off of those. It's more so to just kind of pull out Tyranno Legend, get a front, and then go from there. So to get that going, do you need the four Guy Emperor? So this is still like the main ride for the deck. So you use the Stride skill, which gives Tyranno Legend red text so that when it dies, it calls itself back. That's pretty much the uh, the main goal here. So and that's how the deck works for the grade threes. Going into the grade twos for some support stuff, Mega Rex, four of, obviously is like the go-to ride for this deck. Uh, when it swings, Van Rear, uh, you can retire something else, draw a card, and then you can kind of blast to put this, put a gauge on top of this, uh, just for an extra five for each gauge. You can do that if you just need like a little extra five for a push, but the whole goal of this is just to early game, swing, retire something, and then get some more advantage out of that. You do want to use this for like retiring um, baby wrecks and stuff like that. So this is still like a really, really good key card for the deck. Um, going into more key cards for grade twos, we got Regiodon. This thing is super good because it calls whatever is in the gauge of it. So if you have key cards like baby wrecks or another mega Rex or something that you definitely want to bring back to the board, from your drop, you can put it underneath Reggie Dawn. So also when this swings, you can put the top card of your deck into the gauge. So that way you, if you retire it, you can call the thing that's inside of this thing's gauge uh, to the regret circle. And you can only use that ability to call something from this thing's gauge once per turn, uh, per card name. So use Reggie Dawn once, that's pretty much it. Uh, the honest swing still helps sometimes. Maybe you get lucky, get something good in there. Most of the time it's triggers, so. Do it with do with that with what you will. Then we got two copies of uh, Dilophil Pyro, Dilipho Pyro. What it does is when it's placed fan rear from hand, kind of blast, draw a card. You can call a card from your hand to the rear guard circle, and then you can put you can choose to put the top card of your deck into it as an equip gauge. What I also do like about this is when this is pulled out from the equip gauge of another unit, aka Regidon or the Grade One Blue Sprint. This gets 10k when it's called to a rear guard circle from an equip gauge. So it does make for a, a big old beater uh, when you're doing it during your Giganta Faro turn when you retire everything, resolve this, gets 10k, and then you can put Giganta Faro's skill onto it to make it restand. Last of the grade twos, one Sargle Blaze is a spiky, spicy little attack. Now this is an older card from uh, G Technical Booster set one. Uh, when the, actually the first Gaia set of support came out, this one, this card also came out. It has the engorge ability, so that's when it attacks. You can retire another rear guard to make this unit engorged. Uh, during the battle that this unit attacks, if this unit was engorged, your opponent cannot call grade zeros. So we have draw PGs that are zeros, uh, triggers with bigger shield, so it makes it so that when this swings, your opponent can't call triggers. And then with Giganto Pharaoh, it restands and swings again, so it's a, it's a fun little finisher card that I like, so I'm running one of it. So that is it for the twos. I'm going to move on to the grade ones. The obviously best ride for this deck is Savage Shooter. Um, it's just such a really good starting Vanguard skill. Uh, one place, Soul Blast 1, draw a card. You um, then call a card from hand to rear, and you can put the top card of your deck face down into it, into it as a gauge. So it's really good if you call a Regidon or a Blue Sprint. Just get a gauge going. Its second ability is when it's on rear, you can act, rest this unit, put a card from your drop into, the, into another unit, um, that does not have an equip gauge and give it an equip gauge using the card from your drop. So that way you can put Baby Rex or 
Stale Left Pyro or even Mega Rex into a Blue Sprint or a Regidon. That way, you know, you know what's coming out of it when you do it. So this is still a good card. Obviously it's rested, so then later when you sack it, it's not that big of a deal, but this is a for sure four of for pretty much every Tachikaze deck that I can think of. Uh, we mentioned Blue Sprint a lot, so this is Blue Sprint. A Thanner Rear when it attacks, uh, you can put the top card of your deck into a Rear Guard, face down as a gauge, and then similar to Regidon when it's retired from Rear, you can call the thing that's in this thing's equip gauge to the Rear Guard Circle. You can only use Blue Sprint once per turn uh, with the same card name. So Blue Sprint and Regidon do the exact same thing, but then you have two cards with different names, so you can do the effect twice depending on which one you're using. So I like having Blue Sprint on Excel markers so it can swing and still hit. Uh, and it's still good early game too. Uh, when your opponent's at grade one, you just want to swing, get some gauge, pressure your opponent, you know, with some early damage. So I like blue sprint. Uh, then we are running three Prism Bird because we are running a Gaia deck and we want to make sure we are on Gaia. That's the only way the deck functions. <laughs> so uh, it's the old Stride Fodder. When it's placed on rear from hand, reveal a three, search a deck for Gaia, add it, then you discard a card. And also when you're paying the cost of Stride, this gets grade plus two. So it's Nice little stride fodder as well. Then we got two copies of Freezer Nix. So Freezer Nix is a Gaia specific support card. It's when this is retired or put into the drop zone from rear during your turn, GB1. If you have a Vanguard Gaia in its name, you counter charge and soul charge. And then you can choose one of your other units and it gets 2K. So um, what I like about Freezer Nix is uh, not just the counter charge, but the soul charge, which is really good for Gekanto Pharaoh because it gives your rear guards the ability to restand for Soul Blast 1. So you want to fill up your soul with Freezer Nix. Uh, what I also like to do is with Gaia's skill with the red text, where it can choose two units to bring them back, you can pick Freezer Nix, call it back, and then you can kill it again to counter charge and soul charge. So just to help you fill up your soul. I really like Freezer Nix a lot in this build. Uh, lastly, for grade ones, just gonna scoot these guys up. One, Strilo Colord, <laughs> Stry Colord. Uh, it's a PG Sentinel. Uh, when it's placed from hand, you choose a unit, doesn't get hit. It also has a rear guard engorge ability. So when this is engorged at the end of the battle, you can kind of blast one and you can bounce this back to your hand. So I, I like it just because if it's in your drop and you put it under blue sprint or red on, pull it back out, you swing with it, engorge it, then kind of blast, bounce it back and you have a PG for next turn. So I still think it's a really good uh, tech for Tachikaze decks. And lastly, for grade ones, Elementaria Sanctitude. So you know, every, every deck's running this for premium. It's just a free PG because every G unit has triple drive. So, you know, always room for the Elementaria. So that's it for the grade ones. Moving on to our grade zeros, because we are running grade zeros that aren't triggers. I do run two copies of Baby Rex because this thing is really, really good with Tyranno Legend. So just having this here for reference, Baby Rex is when this unit is put into the drop zone from rear, if you have a touch, Kaze Vanguard, Search your deck for a Tyranno Legend called to rear. So Tyranno Legend specifically says that for its effect to get 10k and put a trigger on the top of your deck, it has to be called by a, an Ancient Dragon ability. So it gets it off with Gaia's skill because Gaia gives the skill to Tyranno Legend and therefore it's calling itself by its own effect. That's how it gets it off that way. It also gets it off with Baby Rex because since Baby Rex searches the deck for Tyranno Legend and this is an Ancient Dragon, it's being called by an Ancient Dragon card effect. So there's different ways to get Tyranno Legend out, especially if you have a few in your deck and you don't have it on your board with Gaia's skill, uh, you have access to that with Baby Rex, which is really, really cool. So I like the two copies for that. Um, but that's it for normal unit grade zeros. We're just going to go into triggers now, uh, starting with the over trigger, just, you know, super, super simple and obvious. It's Drag Veda, Restanding Vanguards are good. So we're gonna keep keep going with that. Then we got our draw PG. Um, just getting the draw PG out of the way for now because I'm only running one. Uh, this mostly because of deck out. So I don't want to deck out. So I got one draw PG. Uh, speaking of Sentinels, one Paris Launcher, which is the Sentinel crit, and then three copies of its brothers, which are cards with the exact same name with different card effects. So this is the old Paris Launchers, the one that just recently got errated, where um, if this is damage checked, it counts as a draw, and then it's also a 15 shield, 10k trigger, and when it's on the rear guard circle, if your vanguard is Gaia, you can move it to the soul and draw a card when your vanguard attacks. So um, ratio-wise, the reason I'm doing it this way instead of like two draw, four Paris Launcher is because I don't want to deck out, and um, 
yeah, the Paris Launcher shield actually come, sometimes comes in handy, but if you would rather do the draw PGs and the Paris Launchers, go for it. Um, next up for triggers, I got two Dino Dial. Uh, Dino Dial is really, really good just for the counter charge. So what it does, it's, it's a 5K trigger 10K shield, but you can move this unit into the soul. If you have a touch because of Vanguard, you want to flip a damage. So soul and counter charge. So that's really, really good for the deck for the Giganto Pharaoh turn. Then I am running one stride crit uh, that literally just because, um, you know, I could be running the other crit that moves soul for 10K just to fill my, you know, soul. Uh, I am doing it for the stride just to make sure that I can perform stride. But if you would rather the other one, I don't really think it makes a difference. I just want more crits in the deck. And obviously we need fronts for Tyrone Legend. So I run three copies of Blade Maiden Parama, which is our front trigger from standard or D standard. Uh, it's if your opponent's Vanguard's grade three or greater, this gets 5k shield. So it's a 20k shield and it's a front trigger. So we want to run fronts with skills. We're only running three just because we have the three Tyranno Legends. So mathematically, we're only really going to get it off about three times per turn. Um, so this works out fine for me in terms of ratios. So then we're going into our heal triggers. Uh, starting off, I do run the one copy of the, how do you pronounce, pronounce, pronounce this name? Convalos, Convalos, Ants, Ants. Anyways, it's the eradicated heal trigger that lets you counter charge or soul charge. So I do like this one for the same reason is if I want to have counter charge set up for next turn, uh, then, you know, get to Gonto Fair or whatever, they need stride skill costs. Um, at least I have this where I can guarantee the counter charge and maybe if I just want it soul for that Gigano Pharaoh turn. And then three copies of the Heal Guardian Tenacitops. Ten Tenacitops. God, I'm terrible with names. Um, so Tenacitops is your Heal Guardian 10K to your grade two or lower Vanguard for the turn. If you didn't write a grade three, you can do 10K or choose one of your units and it, one of your opponent's units gets minus two crit to the end of the battle. Also has that second ability of when it's placed on rear. If you did not take any damage, or sorry, if your damage zone has no cards, you can uh, put the top card of your deck into your damage just so you have counter blast to work with. So that's also helpful just in case your opponent wants to deny you damage. Um, but the trigger lineup is a little messy. I, I will admit that. So if you decide that you would rather run different crits, I still think most of all, I would say the dino dial and the fronts are the most important thing. Um, don't sleep on the dino dial. The counter charge is a little too important for the deck. But if you feel like you can get away with it, thanks to Freezer Nix and other counter charger cards, uh, like if you want to run the Ancient Dragon that's like Soul Blast 2 on flip 2, sure. But I think the Dino Dial is just better because it feeds into Soul as opposed to taking Soul out. But it's been working for me so far. I am feeling a little more comfortable with the one draw trigger because sometimes I feel like having two draws, especially in a deck where we have cards like Gluttony Numberos, where we do six drive checks in a turn. So uh, less draws makes me feel a little bit better. But now we're getting into the fun stuff, which is the G zone. Starting off with two Arc Raider. So Arc Raider is our errata G unit from History Collection. So it lets you stride while you have a guy at Vanguard. So uh, the on hit ability is the red text, which is when this attack hits, choose when your puts regards and retire it. And this also unit also gets 5K. So the way it gets this effect is when it swings, uh, you retire a rear guard to get the red text, and even if it doesn't hit, you can still retire something. We don't really do it for that. We do it for the fact that the act ability gives you two Excel markers, so that way you have more board presence during your Giganto Pharaoh turn. <laughs> um, so that way you can do like seven attacks. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. We have two copies of Gaia Devastate. This is mostly for like, you know, your fun little Link Joker matchup, because it says uh, when it attacks or when it becomes engorged, you can draw a card and choose up to two circles other than the Vanguard for each face up card in your G zone and put all the cards on those circles into the drop zone. So locked cards are still cards, so you can get rid of your locked cards with Gaia Devastate, which is nice. And then if you put three or more cards uh, into the drop zone, you can get 10K, a crit, and a drive. So it's a situational thing, but it's still really good. Uh, then we got two copies of Gluttony Dogma. I just love Dogma. This is one of my favorite cards from Tachi Kaze. It does two Vanguard attacks, so when it swings, you engorge. If you engorge three or more, it gets 10k. If you engorge five or more, you can restand this with Drive minus one, so it's more Vanguard swings. If you get lucky enough to combo this off with Drag Veda, it's really funny because then you can save 
the auto ability for your third Vanguard swing after your Vanguard already has 100 mil. So uh, Dogma is a fun card. I like to do it uh, for funny plays. I can't really recognize any optimal reasoning for it other than it's just a fun card. Uh, then we have uh, Dogma's brother, Neboros. So Gluttony Neboros is when it becomes Engorge. You um, flip, it, flip something face up, choose a total of five of your rear guards or their equip gauges and you put them in the drop zone to re-stand this unit um, as it becomes engorged. It also has a G-Zone effect. While it's face up in the G-Zone, you can Soul Blast one, put the top card of your deck into as an equip gauge for your rear guards, but, and that unit becomes engorged. So you can do it so that you can like proc like your PG or something if you want to, when you flip, if you flip this face up. But uh, it's mostly, I use it as like I, I'm gonna go into this and do swing, restand, swing, just to get six drive checks, just to see if that's the type of game we're playing. Then we got the the ace, the ace card here. Uh, we got Giganto Faro. Uh, I run one copy uh, just because the game should be over by the by the time you finish using this, but uh, might up to, to, to two depending, but so far I'm pretty comfortable with the one copy of Giganto Faro. So what it does is it has Engorge, and when this becomes Engorged, you counter blast one, turn anything in your G-Zone face up, choose the same number of your rear guards as the number of cards retired by this unit's Engorge ability, and those units get 10k and the red text. Once per turn at the end of the battle that's attacked, you Soul Blast one, stand this unit. Just to kind of simplify, I guess, the idea here is you swing, you declare Engorge, you engorge a bunch of units, and then everything goes into standby. You resolve all your rear guards' abilities, you call them back with Gaia's red text that was given to those units, you call things out from Red Udon and Blue Sprint, you use your baby Rexes to search stuff, you make a board, right? And let's say you retired five rear guards and you called five things back. After resolving those five, you can then give five things that red text to restand after they attack. So. It's a really, really good multi-attack deck, and it's a lot of fun, and it's especially fun when you stack front triggers on the top of your deck, thanks to Tyranno Legend, just to guarantee that that front row is not just getting 10K, but 20 or 30, 20 or 30K. Just multiple extra swings, uh, just makes the deck really, really, really aggressive and fun. So, Gonzo Faro, in my opinion, is kind of like your finisher, um, but you can still go into any of the other G units, um, in the meantime for, you know, if you need to prepare for something. But the goal should be Arc and then Pharaoh. I am running the GB8 as my alt finisher if Giganto Pharaoh doesn't work. So what the GB8 does is it engorge and GB8 is when your rear guard is retired, you choose up to one of your opponent's rear guard, they retire it, and you choose one of your other rear guards and it gets 10k until the end of the turn. This combos really well with Gaia Emperor's stride skill because you can just swing Engorge two things, your opponent loses two rear guards. Uh, you choose two of your other rear guards, they get 10K, and then you call those two things back. So it's really good for multi attack as well. You can even just proc it where the thing's retired, you bring it back first, and then you give it 10K just to make it even bigger. Um, same thing, since it's being called by an ancient dragon effect through the red text of Gaia, you can put a front trigger on the top of your deck while this is mid attacking. So this is also still a really good. Uh, finisher. We are running the one copy of Harmonix Messiah, which is just mandatory for premium decks now, pretty much. Uh, it's the only way you get a Guardian ticket, and it has all these stuff where you can unlock things, and if you didn't take any damage, you can put the top card of your deck into your damage zone and draw a card, so uh, this is a pretty much mandatory card for the format. Then we got two a Gardener for G Guardians. So what this one does when it's put on guard, you retire any number of your rear guards, it gets 10k for each thing retired, and then if any of those units had equip gauges on them, you draw for each equip gauge that was on that unit that was retired. Running two copies of Bullish Primer. Primer gets shield for each face up or open circle that you have. So this counts Excel markers, which is really nice. So that's um, two, additional, two additional circles to keep in mind for that effect. Then I'm running one um, Blockade Ganga. Uh, this is really cool because uh, what it does is when it's placed in the guard circle, you retire something, then you can choose two units and they get auto. When this is retired, it goes back into your hand. So that's really helpful for if you have a, ha if you have a Tyranno Legend on your board and you don't want your opponent to you know, put in your drop, you have no way to get it back, you can at least G-guard with this, give it that ability so that when it's retired, it just goes right back into your hand. So 
And you can combo it off between these two as well. Use this one first, use this one to bounce it. These are all really good. And then we have the one dismal for the same reason if your opponent is like adamant about swinging at your Tyranno Legend or something and you a card that you really want to keep on the board, you can just use dismal, protect it, and then that way you're not really worrying about it for the rest of the game. Uh, but that was it for the G zone. I guess I'll just kind of real quick show what a quick little combo would look like for this deck. All right, so assuming you've already done your Arc Raider turn and you've got your markers and you've taken some damage, right? You're at like five damage, let's say. You're kind of close to the end. You're not sure if you're gonna survive these turns, but we're gonna Godanto Pharaoh our opponent, so it's not gonna matter. So we stride, we got our Tyranno Legend or we got ways to get Tyranno Legend. We got some pretty good support cards in our hand, so we're just gonna go full Giganto Fair on our opponent. So we stride, and the first thing we're gonna do is activate our stride skill from Guy Ember. We counter blast one. We call up to two cards from hand to the rear guard circles, um, and so that we can call them back if they are retired. So let's just say we're gonna pick Mega Rex and Tyranno Legend for this case. So those two are gonna have those red, red text abilities. Then we kind of just start filling the rest of our board. So I'm gonna call some additional rear guards that seem like they're gonna be pretty good and helpful during this turn. We'll do the, the baby Rex just so we can get that extra Tyranno Legend out. And we are planning on using Tyranno Legend twice. So we wanna make sure we do have two cards in hand for the discard. I happen to have a front. So that's gonna be one of the front triggers that's going top. And I do have another front in my drop zone. That's gonna be for the other Tyranno Legend. So we just start with some small pokes, maybe we'll blue sprint, we'll get lucky, we'll put something in its gauge. Not bad, you know, it's just something that's not a trigger. Do it again, we'll do a little poke, use Regidon, what do we get? A trigger, unfortunate, so. Uh, do another poke, do another thing with Mega Rex. Then after we do all of our pokes, we're gonna do our Giganto Faro turn. So we're gonna swing, and we're gonna declare Engorge. And we're gonna Engorge five things, right? So let's say we're gonna tell our opponent, I'm gonna engorge one, two, three, four, and five units. So now that we've engorged, we're gonna resolve card abilities. We're gonna start with simple ones like Mega Rex, that just comes back, right? So we're just gonna put that one there. Uh, we'll resolve Blue Sprint. So we can have Blue Sprint die and we call the thing that was on the trigger for Blue Sprints. So maybe we'll put this here. Same thing with Regidon. Uh, Regidon, it looks like, we got our trigger, so not, not much is really going on here, but we can still call it to a rear guard circle just so that we can have a, a pretty decent booster for this column. Tyranno Legend is going to call itself back by its card effect that it got from Gaia Emperor, so it's being called by an Ancient Dragon, and then Baby Rex uh, is also going to be able to resolve its effect to search my deck for a Tyranno Legend. We're going to keep Tyranno Legend on standby. We're going to use Baby Rex now to counterblast, search for another Tyranno Legend, call it to a rear guard circle, and then we're going to resolve our Tyranno Legends. So again, we're doing all this before we go and resolve Gigano Pharaoh. So Tyranno Legend on the right, it's effect, we're gonna discard a card, pick a front trigger from the, our drop, and we put it on the top of our deck. The other one does the same thing, we discard a card. It happens to be a front trigger, so we're just gonna put it on the top of our deck, so they're both getting 10K. Then, with Gigano Pharaoh, we retired five things, so we can choose five things, Kind of blast and flip to give 10k and the ability to restand after they attack. So all these units now, the one, two, three, four, five units that we retired after being called back are now getting 10k and the ability to restand when they swing. So we swing and then we do, oh, a front trigger. Everything's now 20k. Oh, everything's 30k. We got lucky we got another trigger. Maybe we put a crit on something big so that it restands with a crit. So now all of these attacks are gonna be huge. So we got a really big Tyranno Legend swing for 47 or 52, depending if we put the, the crit on here. So it's 52 with the crit, and at the end of its attack, we can Soul Blast one, restand it, swing again. Right now we have two soul, but as you're going through the deck and kind of using Freezer Nix and other cards at Soul Charge, you'll hopefully have additional soul in your deck. Well, that's inconvenient, but <laughs> So that way, you, when you Soul Blast and Restand, you keep going. You swing, Soul Blast, Restand. Swing, Soul Blast, Restand. So the Giganto Pharaoh turn should be like the big finisher. If that doesn't work, um, hope you survive and then go into like GB8 or 
Gluttony Dogma or Neboros <laughs> and go from there. Um, or if you run a second Gigano Pharaoh, you could do it all again. Um, but I pretty much think this is like a one-time thing. The minute you do the Gigano Pharaoh, you should just win the game. But that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys for watching the deck profile. Um, if you guys have seen some games with this deck already, it's been a lot of fun using it. And hopefully I can just show it off more often in the near future. So that's it for me, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.